Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. In this session, let's learn about pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. In short, they are referred to as pannets. Particularly, we will discuss in detail about insulinoma. So, in the next in the next eight to ten minutes, let's see the histology of normal endocrine pancreas. Thereby, looking at the various cells of endocrine pancreas. We will see how pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors can be classified. We will understand a bit about pathogenesis and finally we will look into what is insulinoma. So as we all know, pancreas is a long flat gland which is located in the abdomen behind the stomach which extends horizontally from the duodenum into the spleen towards the spleen right it has both endocrine and exocrine functions the endocrine pancreas is basically composed of millions of clusters of cells and these clusters are referred to as islets of pancreas right and the cells of islets of pancreas are classified into two types one is major cell type another is minor cell type now what are the major cell types they are beta cells, alpha cells, delta cells and PP cells. The minor cell types are D1 cells, enterochromaffin cells and also there is another cell called G cells. We will talk about it a bit later. Now the beta cells are the ones which produce insulin and you know that insulin is the one which regulates glucose utilization in tissues, right? Thereby decreasing the blood sugar. Whereas alpha cells are the ones which secrete glucagon. They stimulate uh, glycogenolysis in the liver and increases blood sugar levels. Whereas the delta cells secrete somatostatin which suppresses both the insulin and glucagon release. The PP cells basically secrete pancreatic polypeptide and that's why they are called as PP, pancreatic polypeptide cells. These are the ones which stimulate gastric and intestinal enzymes. The D1 cells secrete vasoactive intestinal polypeptide which induces glycogenolysis and hyperglycemia whereas enterochromaffin cells are the ones which secrete serotonin as i told you the g cells the g cells is the one secrete gastrin remember g cells are predominantly found in pylorus of the stomach but then they can also be found in duodenum and pancreas so this is a minor cell pump so as I told you, the tumors of pancreatic islet cells are called as islet cell tumors. This is simple, right? But the preferred term is pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. In short, pan-NETs or pannets. These pannets account to around 2% of all pancreatic neoplasms. So let's learn about pannets in terms of the location, number and behavior. In terms of location, they can be seen within the pancreas. Most often they are seen within the pancreas, but they can also be seen in immediate peripancreatic tissues. They can be single or can be multiple. They can behave benign or they can behave as a malignant neoplasm. But fortunately, majority of them are benign ones. And because there are many you know, kinds of cells which secrete various hormones, even these tumors often elaborate pancreatic hormones and that's why they are referred to as functional tumors. Sometimes they do not produce any hormones. I mean the tumors do not produce any hormones and they are called non-functional tumors. So broadly pannets can be categorized into functional pannets and non-functional pannets. Functional pannets are the ones which are symptomatic whereas non-functionals are the ones which are asymptomatic and they are really difficult to identify. Also, pannets, 90% of pannets are sporadic in nature, you know, and the remaining 10% are often hereditary in nature. So, let's try to understand the names of uh, each of these subtypes of pannets. The ones which produce insulin, I mean, the tumors of beta cells, they are called as insulinoma. We'll talk about it a bit later. The tumors of alpha cells is called as glucagonoma, you know, right? These patients have mild diabetes mellitus which, and also a characteristic skin rash called as necrolytic migratory erythema and they also are anemic. Often they have very high plasma glucagon levels. Obviously, this is a tumor of alpha cells which normally secrete glucagon and if you have lots and lots of alpha cells, obviously the plasma glucagon levels has to be high, right? 
The third one is tumors of delta cells. They are called as somatostatinoma because they secrete somatostatin. The clinical features include diabetes mellitus. They can have gallstones. They can have steatoria and also hypochlorhydria. Okay, and obviously they have high plasma somatostatin levels. The tumors of PP cells are called as pancreatic polypeptide secreting endocrine tumors. In spite of you know, patients having very high levels of pancreatic polypeptide you know, hormone, they usually do not have any manifestations. These are non-functional tumors. The tumors of D1 cell, which is a minor cell type, is called as VIPOMA okay, or VIPOMA which presents with WDHA syndrome and what is that W for watery diarrhea, WD watery diarrhea, hypokalemia and achlorhydria. Okay, this is very if you have these features, then we need to assume that this patient might be having tumors of D1 cells which secrete vasoactive intestinal polypeptide because they have very high vasoactive intestinal peptide levels. And the tumors of enterochromaffin cells which secrete serotonin, they are called carcinoid tumors. They are very rare tumors which occurs within the pancreas. So, they are basically, these are rare pancreatic tumors, carcinoid tumors. And lastly, the G cells, as I told you, they are the ones which secrete gastrin and the tumors are known as gastrinoma. Right? These tumors are named after Zollinger and Ellison who identified you know, these patients with very high levels of gastrin. And that's why it's also referred to as Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Now, what is the pathogenesis of panets? If you look into the pathogenesis of sporadic panets, we see that there are alterations in three major genes or three major pathways. The first major gene which is altered is MEN1 gene or multiple endocrine neoplasia 1 gene. This is the one which often causes men syndrome type 1. We will talk about this when I discuss MEN syndromes. The second important set of genes are the tumor suppressor genes, particularly PTEN and TSC2 genes. The mutations of these tumor suppressor genes result in the activation of mTOR signaling pathway. And what does this do, mTOR signaling pathway? This is basically a cancer promoting pathways. The third set of genes are ATRX and DAXX genes. ATRX stands for alpha thalassemia retardation, mental retardation syndrome, which is X-linked. That's why it is called ATRX gene. The second one is DAXS, which is a death domain associated protein gene. The mutations of any of these genes results in alternative lengthening of telomeres because we know after every division, the length of telomeres is shortened, right? Whereas in this case, there is alternative lengthening, thereby maintaining the telomere length the cells do not die and that results in cancer. So, this is in general the pathogenesis of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. So, now let's learn in detail about insulinoma which is a cause for hyperinsulinism, right? We know that this is a tumor of beta cells. This is the most common pan and fortunately majority of these tumors are benign in nature. They produce so much insulin clinically induce significant hypoglycemia. You see, majority of them, hypoglycemia is very mild. But then if the glucose comes down to less than 50 mg per deciliter, then the symptoms can include confusion, stupor and loss of consciousness. Now, what are the precipitating factors for these symptomatology? Usually fasting or it could be after exercise. What will, you, what will one do? If you administer you no know, glucose or if you feed glucose, there will be immediate symptomatic relief. So morphologically, I mean gross features include this is a normal pancreas. Okay, you have these small you know, elevations or irregularities are basically the eyelids. Grossly, the insulinomas are solitary tumors which are often less than two centimeter in diameter. They are often encapsulated, pale to red brown nodules. See, this is a very well encapsulated pale colored nodule which is solitary. So, that's the whole of the pancreas, that's the geodenum, right? This is the image from this beautiful article. So, microscopically, you know, it looks, I mean, remarkably like giant eyelid. So, these giant eyelids, you know, they have cells which are uniform. They are arranged in cords around the blood vessels. That's how you see insulinoma. Okay, they are uniform looking cells. 
But then sometimes some of these tumors do contain abundant amount of amyloid. And that's a key feature of many insulinomas, which is the presence of amyloid, which can be demonstrated by performing special strains like Congo red strain and observing under polarizing microscope. How do you diagnose? What are the lab findings of insulinoma? Of course, after you suspect in a patient with hypoglycemia, laboratory diagnosis include very high circulating levels of insulin. And the most important one is that if you calculate the insulin to glucose ratio, it will eventually be very high. And how do you treat them? Just remove the tumor surgically that will take care of all the symptomatology as well as the rise in the levels of insulin. So that's all about today's session. We just discussed the various pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors in the form of insulinoma, you know, gastrinomas, VIPomas, somatostatinoma, glucogonoma and all those things and in detail about insulin. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries to ask and also you can ask me as to what topics should I be covering in the subsequent sessions. If you feel this video is useful, please do consider subscribing and don't forget to share among your friends. Thank you.